to you by Podcast City Network. It is time to play. You're listening to the Everly Show. Let's go! A shot of entertainment to the head. No doubt. So sit back, relax, put your drinks up, and enjoy the entertainment. Okay. okay. Now we come to the payoff. Let's rock. What is happening, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to the Everett Lee Show podcast. I'm Everett Lee. Quick shout out to all my followers on Twitter. You can follow me out to Everett Lee or score Lee. Facebook.com slash Everett Lee. Click that thumbs up. And of course, podcastcity.net, the official home of the Everett Lee Show podcast and much more content on the Podcast City Network. And let's cut the damn music. <laughs> let's get straight to the point today. There's a lot to talk about. A lot to discuss and a lot of stuff going on here with wrestling, especially this week, which we'll get into. And talking about wrestling, this 2018 WWE Extremes Rule Pay-Per-View Prediction Show. Tonight, I am not alone. I am joined by none other than Mr. So Smooth, Second Round, Floor Edition, Tommy James, and Robin Nelson of Wrestle Popcast. Gentlemen, what's happening? <laughs> Pretty good. What's up, guy? Hey. How y'all been today? Good. It's Friday. Mm-hmm. Friday, it feels good. Um, I got my Roman Reigns shirt on, you know, because I got a... Last time I wore my ginger shirt, he lost. So uh, maybe this will work out where, you know, this bastard will fucking lose. So we'll see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> well, hopefully you don't have a thirty-three and a third chance of you know. <laughs> <laughs> oh damn! Let's get one. Damn. There we go. <laughs> this is gonna be great, man. WWE Extreme Rules pay per view coming this Sunday on the WWE Network for nine ninety nine. You get it for nine ninety nine. And before we move into Extreme Rules Prediction Show with my boys here, we're going to give some love to the sponsors, especially Podcast City Network, head over to podcastcity.net. You can check out shows like Tommy James on Second Rounds, Florida Edition, New York Edition, and Robin Nelson from Wrestle Popcast. And Robin Nelson presents Paranormal Files 13. And let's give uh, some love in the chat there. David C. Russell, Deathmatch Wrestle Podcast. And... You can check out Podcast City Network on the Facebook page, facebook.com slash Podcast City Network. Hit that thumbs up. And send a tweet to Podcast City over on Podcast City Network's Twitter page, Twitter feed, Podcast City Net, Telltale Travel. Hit Brittany Imler up on the podcastcity.net website. Book that destination you want to get away. Maybe you want to go on a wrestle, cruise, or wherever the hell you want to go. Hit her up. She'll get you there. Atlantic Sounds over off of Daytona Beach on International Boulevard. Atlantic Sounds has been around since 1983, and they have a collection of vinyl records, cassettes, and CDs, and much, much more. So check them out on their Facebook page, facebook.com slash Atlantic Sound Records. And, of course, City Limits Tap Room in Deland, Florida, home of Draft Day, the official host of Draft Day, brought to you by Podcast City Network. City Limits Tap Room has a wide variety of sports TVs, indoor and outdoor stage in the back for music, guest, and much, much more at City Limits Tap Room in Deland, Florida. And, of course, SportsSandy.com, the official merchandise of Podcast City Network. Head over to SportsSandy.com, let them know Podcast City Network sent you, and you want that Podcast City Network t-shirt. <gasps> uh, damn. Okay. I think I'm done. <laughs> Take a drink. Take a drink. Take a drink. Oh, damn. I think, that, I, think I outdid myself, gentlemen. What do you think? <laughs> Did I? Good enough. Good enough. Good enough. <laughs> hey, you should have that shirt sleeveless, man. <laughs> Here we go. 
There you go. Farmer's tan. <laughs> tan. I'm Casper, man. Look at that shit. <laughs> I'm like a freaking ghost, man. I don't get out in the sun. I get out in the sun. I like freaking. I'm like when I open the door of my house. I'm like. <laughs> <laughs> I never see the damn light of day anymore. You know, with the hours I work, running network, and basically promoting you guys. I want to first off, since talking about you guys and the network, I want to appreciate everything that you do for the network, podcasting network, all the shows that you put out, all the content, and I love it and I do appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. Now, let's talk about Extreme Rules. Extreme Rules. This card, I don't know how you guys feel, but this match card is pretty much not really extreme if you look at a lot of things, I feel. And I feel that a lot of this is just, are they filling a month just to get the SummerSlam? Because of how Raw and SmackDown's been, the ratings oh, Raw Raw sucked. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Raw Raw sucked. Raw the ratings were the lowest they've ever been. SmackDown barely even made an impression on me this week. You know, it's just so much going on and not really much on the go home shows like we used to see nowadays. It just it's like you know, just little filler match, filler match, filler filler done. That's your three-hour show. Two-hour show. SmackDown can do a little bit better week by week, but when it comes down to it, it's just not, you know, it's wasn't hanging in there this week. Just both shows weren't. And looking at the match card for this pay-per-view, I'm just, like, scratching my head. It's like, are they really throwing this together just to get through, to get straight to SummerSlam? They should just go to SummerSlam and get it done with. Am I not right? Yeah. yeah. I know. That's just how I how I feel about it. But starting off, we have the kickoff show. And before we do get in the kickoff show, we're going to do a point system tonight. <laughs> and Tommy knows what I'm talking about, don't you? Wait, say that one more time? We're doing a point system between you guys tonight. We're going to have a little fun here. Yeah, yeah. yeah we're having fun. Damn straight. Yeah. We're definitely going to have some fun with a point system for the fact that on the point system, you guys will be pointed and marked on the comments and the opinions that you'll be given tonight. And whoever has the most points wins. So may the best <laughs> one win. <laughs> I could give you I could give you some expired concert tickets that no one took if you. There you go. Yeah, I still have them. Yeah, no one wanted them. on fire. I know. I'm going to. I'm going to do something with them. I haven't figured out yet, but I'm do something. Toilet paper. Well, I already (laughs) used one of them, so. (laughs) All right, let's get into this first match here. We're <laughs> the kickoff show. We're going to have a kickoff show, which we normally do on these pay per views. The first match on the kickoff show is New Day versus Sanity in a tables match. I'm going to give it to uh, Tommy, start things out, and followed by Robin. New Day Sanity tables match. What, what do you think What the deal is with this, man? Well, I mean, honestly, like, I think this should actually be on the card because you just got Sanity, you know, they came up, and, I mean, they're they're actually a real force to be reckoned with, and I, honestly, I, I think it deserves it. The New Day themselves, obviously, is already a huge name. So you're going to have them in a table match, and it's just going to be a brawl in general. I mean, Sanity is just, uh, I mean, I love Eric Young and Killian Dane. Like, uh, you know, these those two guys, to me, are way better than Wolf. Uh, he, he's good, but those are the two real members, for me, of Sanity. And, um, I mean, the New Day is, you know, just they're the New Day. They, they, they show up, they do their job, they make a bunch of jokes, you know, Big E gets to dance a little bit and have a good time. Um, they're going to put on a, a fun match. This is what that match reminds me of, just a nice little fun, exciting match. Um, I don't see anything too crazy. You might get some good spots with, uh, with Kofi. Uh, him and I can see um, 
Dane probably doing something nice. Because Dane's a big dude that can do some fucking moves. Mm-hmm. And Woods just pretty much going to get his ass whipped like always. <laughs> uh, they, they waste Woods, man. I mean, Woods is so talented, but it's just, they, you know, compared to those two other guys. But I, I just, to me, this match is going to be fun. Because the card, like we were saying before, is really not that interesting. So this should have at least been on the main card just for a fun, fun time match. Right. Right. I totally agree. Robin? Yeah, I think it'd be a fun match at the tables, but Sanity deserves to be in the ring with somebody better than the New Day. It's going to be a, a great fun match. New Day needs to go in the back room and play with each other and throw pancakes. You don't even deserve to be in the ring with Sanity. Sanity needs to be up there on the pay-per-view fighting some real men. Uh New Day, don't get wrong, they're fun, you know. And Xavier Woods should, is better off as a solo wrestler. He needs to get away from those jokesters. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I I, I, told, I agree with you guys. I totally agree with what you're saying and stuff. This match should be up on the main card, and it should not be on the kickoff show. I would look at a couple other matches on this card would be good for a kickoff show. Not, not this, you know. And all I got to say is thank God they didn't put the SmackDown Tag Team or Raw Tag Team Championship match on the kickoff. Thank God they didn't do that because we've seen that too many times. And it's just getting boring. It is. Yeah. It is. It's just I'd rather, I'd rather hear Corey Graves' big mouth on the kickoff show than see that match. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yeah, definitely, definitely. Well, I got to say, I'm going to give Tommy, I'm going to give you 10 points right there for that starting off right there. And Robin, <laughs> I was I was hoping you would uh, throw something in there, but you know what? Since you threw in the pun about New day, going in the back, playing with yourselves. I'm gonna have to give you. I'm gonna have to give you 15 for that one. I'm sorry, Tommy. That was just great. That was a great pun. So, <laughs> Robin's got that one right there in the first round. There. <laughs> Tommy, we still got more matches, man. I'm pulling for you. Oh, hey, I'm gonna have fun with Tommy. I like this guy, man. I'm a film. We're gonna have a good friendship. Yeah, we're, we're gonna, we are definitely gonna have some fun. But who are you picking to win? Because I'm picking Sanity. Oh, I... Sanity by far, man. Uh, young man. I always loved Young. I loved him back when he was with Impact Wrestling. Oh, it's mm-hmm. gonna be great, man. He's gonna put on a solid Chris match, man. It's gonna be Sanity. My yeah. pick, my pick would have to be Sanity because they 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 did right with them. They brought them in. They brought them in strong. They had them beat down the Usos, and they. Who? I mean, they. The, who? Who? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. They they beat down the Usos. They they've been causing Sanity the last few weeks since they've debuted, and it's great. Uh-huh. What? Sanity. Yeah, they've, they've been, been causing, causing sanity. sanity. Yeah, sanity. They've been sanity. living up to their name. And I am going to have to pull for them because what what else does New Day have to pull? I mean, proof here for the fact that if they win against Sanity, it's like, okay. But if they lose, then that's not going to hurt me for the fact that New Day's already established a lot as a trio and tag team. Yeah. So Sanity is going to win this one. My my hat's going off on sanity right there. Yeah. Well, on the one of the next matches, we move up to the main card after the non pyrotechnics. I don't know what. Yet. The, you missed one match. What's that? Ooh, he gets ten points for that. What? There's, there is one more match on the pre-show, which is it's it's trash, but I just read it today. Oh, okay. Cien is going against Sincara. Because who doesn't want to see that? <laughs> what? Sienna? They're finally putting him on a pay-per-view? They're finally using sort of. him. <laughs> Sienna is on the pre-show with going up against Sin Cara. Really? Yeah, they just I put it up. No freaking way. Give that yeah. guy 10 points for bringing that up. Zero for <laughs> ten. Uh, Everett. Ten. 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 Yes. Tommy, 
you get 10 points. <laughs> you right now are trailing Robin right there by five. We got hey, more. You, deserve it. you know something? You yes. deserve zero for not being on that. Where were you on that? <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, what the fuck he does? <laughs> 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 I had to. I had to. All right, let's talk about this then, okay? Since Tommy brought it up, go ahead. All right, Sienna, Andre Almas versus Sin Cara. <laughs> okay, uh, so we got uh, Mexican versus Mexican. Um, so it's going to be a lot of high flying shit. It's going to be a waste of a time of a match. Cien deserves so much better than fucking Sin Cara. It's like what they did with Alberto Del Rio when he came in. You know, they had him doing great things. They were like, you know, we're going to make you fight Sin Cara. And it's not even the real Sin Cara, so it's just like, whatever. But to me, like, Cien, again, he deserves so much more. This guy, I'm not saying he should be fighting for a title right now, but you're talking about a former NXT champ. And he's actually really talented. The chick that's with him, I forgot her name, but she's got a freaking, she's a perfect manager. They have perfect heel. Zelina Vega. What was it? Zelina Vegas. Or yeah, Zelina, Zelina Vega. Vega. Yeah. She, and she's hot. You know, she got a nice little booty. But um, it's this is a pointless match. You know, I, I can understand why it would even be skipped over. But to me, I really like CN, and I think it's just a waste of time for this. He's obviously going to win because there's no reason for Sin Cara to win. I'm hoping that he can do the little hop into the ring correctly now without killing himself. So, CN all the way. All right. Robin? Uh, Sienna's going to win, too. Uh, him and Sin Cara have a history together. Uh, you know, back in the day, they've wrestled each other. They have great chemistry in the ring. You know, um, also, Sienna used to be a masked luchador as well, you know, until he lost the mask. And um, it's it'll be – I agree with them. It's going to be boring. But, you know, we're going to – Sienna's going to win. It, that's just a given. So let's just skip that topic and go to the real stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I – let me put my two cents in here. Um, yeah, I, I feel that they should have a better opponent for Sienna because he was a great NXT champion. He came a long way. He developed really, really well. Yep. You know, for for the type of uh, wrestler he is and what he what he what he did in NXT. When I first saw him starting out, I didn't really care too much for him. But as time went on, it he just showed so much, you know, potential, and he put on hell of a matches in NXT. How could you not go wrong with that? And yep. him on Sin Cara, I just, it's like, come on, you know? It's like they waited for Sin Cara to come back from his injury, and they're going to use him. Or were they going to wait around to see if Rey Mysterio will come in in WWE? Really? Come on now. Come on. Yeah, I say Sinyana, uh, is Amos is going to win. And he's going to call out the bat locker room. And I wouldn't be surprised if someone does come out, but I think that's probably going to be much it. It's going to be a quick match. One, two, done. Coming out. Huh? Kalisto will come out. We'll have another fucking truth. <laughs> Actually, I don't know. With Kalisto there, they might be able to put on a better match than him and Sankara. At least Kalisto's got skills. He just can't talk. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah. They're wasting, they're wasting Sienna's uh, talent, man. Mm -hmm. WWE is famous for that, man. They don't know how to use a certain wrestler. They they waste a lot of talent, man. Mm -hmm. They do, they do, they definitely do. And and it, it's just that that hurts. It hurts, and I hate to see talent like that being wasted. They should bring out some good competition on SmackDown. They got it. They have it. You have the competition. Why don't you utilize it instead of using someone that's basically jobbed for almost everyone on the roster? You know? Yeah. Well, Tommy, Robin, you both get five points for that one right there. Pretty good. <laughs> so, five on it. Yep. You guys both get five. Five on it. Yes, five. Five times. Five, five times. Throw it up, throw it down. Five on it. <laughs> so, so, Robin, you may have a... 33 and a third chance... Of... Uh, oh, <laughs> <fucking. laughs> 
<laughs> I'm going to have fun with that tonight, my new sound clip. <laughs> All right. Another match that I feel that was just thrown on there just to fill time is Finn Balor versus Mr. Constable or TGI Friday Baron Corbin, you know? <laughs> I mean, I love when they let Robin start this one out here, man. <laughs> oh, Baron- do we got to talk about the bubblegum cop, the constable? <laughs> yawn, 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 Damn. yawn, yawn. <laughs> Yeah, Finn Constable. Balor's just gonna wipe the constable's face on his ass and just kick his ass in the ring. That's my opinion. Bring the toilet paper out. I mean, that match is oh, out. Nah, uh, no comment. That I don't even want to see that match. <laughs> Damn. Damn. The constable. What the fuck is the constable supposed to mean? <laughs> <laughs> Like, is he from like Scotland Yard or something? What? <laughs> <laughs> I know. I know. He brought back the Britney Spears look, so that's a plus. <laughs> <laughs> the crazy Britney Spears look, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's a plus right there, man. That definitely is. But <laughs> you want? You have any more you want to add, Robin? Yeah, and Finn Beller's going to be sprinkling little rainbows on him after he wins. <laughs> <laughs> Do I have everybody's attention now? <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh god. Oh god. Tommy, follow that. <laughs> I mean I mean Robin's absolutely right. I see the rainbows coming, I see the sprinkles coming. Uh, I, I, me, I'm the same with the constable thing. It reminded me of Pirates of the Caribbean. I was like, <laughs> I was like, what the fuck kind of a name is that? Like, I get corporate cane. You know, you got it because you're corporate cane. Mm-hmm. But it's like the constable, Baron Corbin. I mean, he stole my look. It, it's I don't feel like you know he should be fucking. <laughs> It's a, it's a, oh, another fucking stupid ass match I just threw together. Like, yes. oh, like the old Baron Corbin. And this motherfucker was a fucking badass when he fucking first came. He was with the, the lone wolf. You were like, this guy's a fucking badass. And he, what was he, beating people in like three to <laughs> yeah. three to that countdown? Mm-hmm. And now it's just, what the fuck are you doing? They just don't know what to do. He gets to the fucking money in the bank, he loses it. You're like, yeah, you scrub. Scrub, you scrubbed him. Yeah. You know something? I'd rather see Corey Graves take on Finn Balor. You do, and he's hurt. <laughs> he doesn't <laughs> wrestle anymore. At least he can put on a show. Try at least. But fucking, um, it's probably going to end in a stupid way, too. Like, I'm, Obviously, I want Balor to win, but I got a stupid re- fucking feeling. He's going to fucking catch him in an end of days, and you're going to be like, well, this is how it's going to fucking end. And he's like, I told you so. And you're like, fuck you. <laughs> Why is he telling Kurt Angle what to do? I don't, I don't get it. Barry I know. I know. That's Stephanie's bitch right there, man. That's Stephanie's bitch. <laughs> There's so many people you could have picked. You could have picked fucking Mike Jackson. It would have made more sense. You picked, oh, I'm going to pick Baron Corbin. Because this guy's a badass. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. It, it, they should have. They should have picked someone else. They definitely should have picked someone else, man. I mean, I god dang. Show, it would have made more sense because he's been missing for a while. So if the Big Show came back and like he's like leaning over, like Kurt. Kurt's just looking up. You're like, I can see why Kurt Angle would be afraid of the Big Show. Mm-hmm. But Corbin, yeah. Kurt Angle, even as now that he can barely move, can still fuck him up easily. Yeah, Ugh. I know. <laughs> <laughs> and plus, and plus, he's stiff in the ring. Who wants to see a yeah. stiff match, man? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I feel bad for Battler in that case because he's a good worker. So now he's going to have to try. He's going to have to hold up the match himself. Yeah. But ugh, and you get dressed in that stupid outfit. Like, oh, come on, man. I know. Uh, it's just, it, it's freaking, yeah, yeah, he does. Finn Balor did cut a good point on him. He looks like someone from like TGI Friday. You know that? That's basically that's basically what it is. It's like he's like, he like yeah. my substitute teacher back in high school. He was like a herb. You know when those substitutes walked in, you were like, this guy's a herb. We're going to be able to destroy him. 
Yeah. You guys are going to do your work today. Go fuck yourself. I ain't doing shit. We're going to talk. And that's what he reminds me of. Yeah. You know what that reminds me of now when he's speaking about Pirates of the Caribbean? Man, I didn't need to go make a trip to Disney World and go ride that ride, damn it. Yeah, that's a good ride. <laughs> they changed it, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, got some. I'm reading the comments right here. David, man, he's just like, just... <laughs> He he's saying, yeah, Robin. It's probably from Brother Love's collection. <laughs> That's what he said his outfits from. <laughs> I, I I would have to agree with that right there, man. Hey, you know I, something? Yeah. Uh, he David likes to bring up Brother Love a lot. You know, he must um, has some uh, um, you know knee pads he bought from the sports store and is ready to rub them on when he meets Brother Love. And he's going to be getting some real love. He's going to come to David and be like, I love you. Oh. Oh, dude, and come and blow my horn because I love you. David Russell. <laughs> He went there. <laughs> oh, he did. He went there. He went full. He went full commando right there. <laughs> Gentlemen, let's broaden our minds. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you can't put that in if you got to play Prince after that. Now I can feel like I can do some shit. <laughs> Robin tonight is a. Now, this is a force to be reckoned with. <laughs> I'm surprised that Baron, when he walked up to the ho uh, to where they're staying at, that no one asked him, the, you know, valet his car, <laughs> their car. <laughs> That's what he looks like. That's what he looks like. I'd have to say now on the points here, Robin, <laughs> since you, since when you talked about rainbows and stuff, you made me think of Skittles and Lucky Charms with Finn Balor. <laughs> I'm gonna have to give you ten points for that one right there, man. <laughs> so you are at thirty, and Tommy, you pulled up some really good points, and just the Baron Corbin, man. I'm gonna have to say, I'm gonna have to give you another five points. <laughs> so what? you guys, so yeah, you guys he are. He All right. Get ten. He put some good points in. All right. He did put some good points in. Thirty-five, right there. Thirty-five to thirty, right there. So it's basically not much of a thirty-three and third chance that I'm gonna fuck this up tonight. <laughs> yes. All right. All right. Let's move on from the. Uh, Rainbow Bright and um, TGI Friday. So we're at the Raw Tag Team Championship match. We have the Deleter of Worlds versus the B Team. Tommy, why don't you start this off here? All right. So I, I believe I remember last time we were saying uh, this match was supposed to take place the last pay per view. I don't know what happened with that. It just randomly just disappeared. Um, another match I'm not interested in. Um, I don't know where it's going to go. I don't. It's, I want Matt Hardy and Bray to still keep the titles, but I don't know. Like, I don't know what WWE is thinking now. Like, they don't deserve – these guys don't deserve to be in the title run. Uh, they're, they are a joke. You know, I mean, it's a, don't get me wrong. It is hilarious to watch, you know, Bo fucking shitting on his brother. It's fucking great. I love it, this, you know, just to see that. Because I always believe it. So, you know, it's great that with the beard, it, it, it works for me. I don't know what they're going to do. Like, this match to me is just, it's, it's going to be uh, wonderful. Is it going to be delightful? Is it going to be obsolete? Somebody will get deleted. I don't know. I think i got to go with the B team. I think, you know, maybe that, that title run is running a little dry, and I don't know what they want to do with Bray anymore. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I, totally, I totally agree with that. Yeah. I, would, I totally agree with all the points and everything and stuff. I just... I, I feel the same way. It's like, what what the hell are they going to do? You know, the later worlds or B team, you know, and I feel has if that's been dried up there, you know, Robin, your thoughts. I'd rather watch a match from glow wrestling than watch that. <laughs> <laughs> the show. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was really good. <laughs> delete, delete, glow. Yes. 
I'd rather watch Netflix than watch fucking this match. That's that's, that's good, dude. Yeah, that is great. <laughs> That is that is great. That is freaking great. Yeah, I I feel I feel that they are gonna take the belts off the Deleter Worlds. It's run its course. It's gotten quick. It's like stale really quick. They're gonna take the belts off them. They're gonna put them on the BT. However, what I've heard from the rumor mill is that basically the B team is going to be doing an angle with a tag team. That basically took out Titus Catering a few weeks ago. <laughs> Titus Catering worldwide. <laughs> and we know who that is. It's the Authors of Pain. The Authors of Pain. I guess they're going to set up for the B team to be that transitional champions where the Authors of Pain can get the tag team titles. And after that... They, the Authors of Pain deserve so much better than a, a joke to mm-hmm. fucking take the, the belts off of. If you want the Authors of Pain to be fucking known as the Authors of Pain where they just beat the crap out of people, it would make more sense if they're beating somebody more relevant, somebody that actually is a force to be reckoned with. I mean, in that case, I would rather see it be Matt Hardy and Brick. At least those are big names. I mean, one's a former WWE champion. Another one's a former ECW champion, so that's nice. Uh, so the Authors of Pain, at least if they're beating them, you're like, and, and it has to be a squash, too. Because like if they squash Bo and Curtis, you're just like, okay, not surprised. Like, you know, it makes sense if they were able to, it would shock people if they were able to say squash freaking Bray and, and Matt like that quick, where you're like, okay, they're, these guys mean business. And they should. They, they're Authors of Pain. They're great. <laughs> mm-hmm. Anything you want to add to that, Robin? Yeah, Authors Pain is great, especially to have that great manager who managed the, you know, Legion of Doom and the Road Warriors, man. Yes. I just, I just like that chemistry, the evilness about it, man. I just want to see some gold around their waist, man. Screw the B team. Uh, yeah. Let the, let the B team uh, be janitors and sweep the uh, wrestling mats after every match, man. That's all they're good for. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I totally agree. Authors of Pain, man, I'd rather see them in there with uh, Team Delete. That would be a good match, but like I said, you know, I'd rather watch Glow, but, you know, on that match. But. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely, because for the fact that the B team right here, you you can say one thing. Of course, um, Bo Dallas can actually, he, he's going to be able to work with his brother, you know, and... Yeah, the B team's gonna win. They're gonna they're gonna take the belts off. They're gonna give the B team because they're undefeated. If they decide to keep the belts on Bray and Matt, then if they're gonna use the authors in that way and use Bray and Matt, it I think it's gonna just destroy them for their what credibility they built up and it's just not gonna look great. But with a team that's goofy and mid card like the B team with Bo Dallas, Curtis Axel, perfect, you know, perfect transitional champions. Yeah, the B team is going to win this one. They're going to become the transitional champions. And I'm going to try to pull this up right here. There's the point system. You can see right there, ladies and gentlemen, with my mouse right there. So with that right there, I am going to pull up the point system. And you pulled up some really good points there. I'm going to have to give Tommy, I'm going to have to give him 10 points on that one right there. And I'm going to have to give Robin 10 points right there, too, with you, what you basically have mentioned there. So there you go. You got Tommy leaning at 45 and Robin leaning at 40. <laughs> hey, that's all good. We're having some fun. We are. We, we, are, we definitely are. We definitely are, and I'm, I'm having fun, and this this is great. Shout out to everyone viewing the live stream right now, and shout out to everyone listening to the podcast. I want to give you guys a shout out right now. Another tag team match we have is the SmackDown Tag Team Championship match. We have the Bludgeon Brothers. I finally said it right. <laughs> yes, you did. Versus Team Hell No. Oh, dude, it's it's gonna be a given. You know, you know it's gonna happen. Yeah, 
Robin, start it off, man. Start it off. You're all over this, you know, it's man. Gonna, it's <laughs> going to happen. Um, t- Team Hell, no, they're not going to get the belts. It's going to be something like something really ridiculous, you know, and, you know, Team Bludgeon's going to get away with the belts. It's going to be something stupid. Um, Team Bludgeon's going to play a lot of mind games of Daniel and Kane. Uh, not Daniel and Kane. I mean, Daniel, Brian, and Kane. <laughs> I'm not speaking biblically from the Bible. That's Kane and Abel. But, <laughs> but like I said, I have a feeling that Kane and Dan are not going to work that well together. I think there's going to be some more uh, old wounds breaking up and some old scars during this match. And, and the Bludgeon Brothers are going to still be the SmackDown Tag Team Champions. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I... I agree with you right there. Tommy? Yeah, I have to agree. Um, I think, actually, I think The Miz is going to get involved in this one. Oh, I can see um, that, too. I can see that, yeah. Good, good, good setup. I mean, coming into, like, with SummerSlam coming up, being in the Barclays, you can get a nice, a nice little program with The Miz and Daniel Bryan. It's nice to see the whole team, uh, hell no, back again. I know this is supposedly... No one's sure yet that it might be Daniel Bryan's swan song because he might be leaving when his contract's up. But, uh, yeah, it's just one of those matches. They were like, this is cool. Let's put it together. And it, it, it's not going to be a clean win. And if it is a clean win, it's mainly because somebody missed show. Yeah, awesome. He turns around, and then he gets fucking clobbered right in his freaking head. And yeah. Kane's just on the outside for some reason getting beat up by Eric Rowan because that makes sense. Yeah. WWE, it makes sense. That should be their new slogan. Yeah, it makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, yeah, and also another slogan is for them too, for WWE, it's for the casual fan that doesn't yeah. know what other wrestling is out there. That's exactly what it is. <laughs> yeah, you, don't yeah. Know, you don't know the wrestlers and other wrestling organizations? That's good, because we're going to make sure you know that this is garbage. Look at that. <laughs> exactly. Crazy. Because you can try to go to a casual WWE fan and tell them, here, check out Ring of Honor or go check out some indie wrestling. Oh, no, I don't want to do that. WWE is where it's at. It's like, well, you're not really watching some great wrestling. Like I said, I told you this before. Uh, um, they just have lack of storytelling, man. That's all it is. Lack of storytelling. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I know a lot of people that actually, I, when I first seen Ring of Honor, I used to watch them on TV, and I finally had an opportunity. They were in Coney Island, and I got a chance to go see them. And um, uh, Dalton Castle showed up. And Ooh. I love Dalton. I think he's awesome. But I looked, I was telling my boy, too, I was like, if you see him in WWE, he's just, they'd be like, oh, that's another Adam Rose type guy, another No Way Jose. Yeah. But it's like, no, it's not. This guy is extreme. He's a former ROA champion now since he lost to Jay Lethal, who's another freaking amazing athlete. And half these guys don't want to come because they're going to ruin their gimmicks yeah. and ruin their talent. That's why you'll never see the Young Bucks in the WWE Universe. That's why you'll never see. You never know. Those the but paycheck if they did, <laughs> Vince would make them so dumbed down, they'd yeah. make them into little idiots, man. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Look at back in the 80s. Look back in the 80s when um, a bunch of good wrestlers from NWA would come over to WWF, and you know Vince hated the NWA. He made half those wrestlers stupid. For example, yeah. Terry yeah. Taylor, the Red Rooster. <laughs> really? <laughs> Terry Taylor was a great technical wrestler, and he mm-hmm. had to go by the whole Red Rooster gimmick. Really? I know. Yeah. I know. And one gimmick, one gimmick that he was given was uh, Dusty Rhodes was given the polka dots, but you want to know something? He made it. He made it his own, man. He definitely did make it his own. The polka dot thing. Don't forget, he had sapphire. Yes, it was sapphire. Sapphire. I've heard of that, man. (laughs) And he would do that little dance of sapphire. He'd be like, (laughs) he'd shake that little waist for a big guy. Yeah, you guys pull up some really good points on this, man. I I don't know who the hell to give points to this round, man. Who cares about the points? I just like talking about wrestling. I I know, I know. But you know what? I am going to (laughs) give... I am going to basically give you guys both for that right there it just was freaking just great as soon as I could find you I got so much shit on my desktop alright here we go alright for the point system this time man since both of you guys brought us some really good points and really good stuff talking about stuff that we both love with wrestling 
going to give you guys both 20 points on that one. Yes! So, yeah. So, you're at basically, what? You're at, I can't count. Five, 65 now, 55, 33 in the third chance. 65 there, and you're at 60 there, Robin. So Cool. Yeah. So, that was freaking awesome. That was freaking awesome. I don't have an awesome sound bit on my... Uh, on my uh, computer, I need to get. That's the next one. Yeah, that's the next one to get because we still got thirty-three and third chance. Yes. If I put the cup, maybe I could get into a vein muscle. If you're gonna do that, looks like a. Um, the natural Butch Reed, where he'd sit there and kiss his biceps. You know, I used to okay. do that like that. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> freaking great, man. Just freaking great. <laughs> <laughs> well, moving on. We have the United States Championship match. We have Jeff Hardy putting the U.S. title on line against Shinsuke Nakamura. Now, Tommy. What the heck, man? Jeff Hardy, Shinsuke Na- Nakamura. <laughs> Nakamura. <laughs> Nakamura. Me speak no English. Me speak no English. <laughs> yeah. Me speak no English. The greatest heel line ever. <laughs> mm-hmm. And when he ta- when he talks, he squints. It looks like he wants to take a big shit in the ring when he does that. <laughs> <laughs> Me, AJ Styles. <laughs> <laughs> he does. <laughs> It's like, do your do your gimmick and take a shit, or are you can take a shit and do your gimmick. Okay. It looks like a South yeah. character. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's basically what it looks like, man. It does, <laughs> it does. Now Jeff Hardy, amazing, amazing in ring talent. He is. Jeff proves that he is a force to be reckoned with in the ring. I still think to this day, even with tag team, with his brother, and even singles, because he's he's a great singles competitor and great tag team. But when he's on the singles run, he's just he's doing great. He's held on to the title for quite a while now. And it would be crazy to see them take this belt off of Jeff and put it on a person like Shinsuke Nakamura. But they do like taking this title here and putting it on characters that people hate for instance they had it on Jinder Mahal they had it on Rusev so there you there you go right there I can see possibly two two scenarios here I can see Jeff retaining and moving on to better competition maybe a Sienna Amis you know, there, there's a competition right there. I would there. like to see that. That would be a good... Yeah. I'd rather see that than him and Nakamura. Mm-hmm. That would be a great match. Yeah. I would love to see that. There's your competition yeah. right there, right? Okay. If they put it on Nakamura, where the hell are they going to go at? Are they going to have a feud with Jeff and Nakamura? I mean, I mean, what... I don't really see anything here besides a match and just to... Take a title or retain a title. That's that's how I feel. How do you feel, Tommy? Well, um, you know, from everybody that knows from listening to this show and to listening to my show, uh, I am a huge Nakamura fan or cock Nakamura, as I like to call him now. Um, I am so upset of what they've done to him because he deserves so much better. He's so talented. And I, he's such a nice guy, too, because I've met him. He's such a nice guy. And I love Jeff Hardy, too. And I don't honestly know what they're going to do here. In my opinion, because you've been dicking Nakamura every single pay-per-view you could think of, you got to have him win. you got to give him the belt. Because what's the point of what's, – what's, I don't even know. I don't even know how to say it. Like, what's the point of this guy now? He doesn't want to go back – there's a possibility he may go back to Japan. But the reason – the main reason I came, too, was because, like, it's killing his body in Japan because, you know, they're actually fucking nailing each other. And it's just easier, like, you know, road for him. He's making good money. So 
and he's a good heel. He's a very good fucking heel. I, even when he started that whole I no speak English thing, I loved it. I thought it was hilarious because it's just like, yes, so good. You no speak English. We know you speak English, so it's perfect. But you gave the belt to Jeff, and he's a great performer, in-ring performer. But now he's doing the face paint again, which is nice to see. Uh, and I, I want Nakamura to win because I'm a fan, and it makes sense that if Jeff does win, where can he go from here? And CN would be fucking awesome to see. Like, that would be fucking amazing. And, it, you know, it's sad that we have to say that we'd rather see CN versus Hardy than Hardy versus Nakamura. Because that should be a freaking main event match right there, those two guys. I mean, back in ROH, that's a main event freaking match right there. Yep. Mm -hmm. so it's, and it's pathetic and it's sad. And just, I want Nakamura to win. I hope he wins. If he does win, he'll just continue the program with Jeff for a little bit. Because you dicked him against AJ which, you know, I guess we can see where that's eventually going to go, but you, you got to do something with the freaking guy. And, and otherwise, he's just a joke. And the fans aren't going to care no more. And yet again, a waste of talent. Yeah. I I agree. I, def, I definitely agree with everything, everything with that. Yeah. with I, I know how you're a big Nakamura fan. And yeah, totally, totally. Anything you want to add to that, Robin? Yeah, I think I think Nakamura's gonna win it because um, he's been due for a, a title. Um, it's it he I have a feeling he's gonna end up getting it because for a while they have to give him a title sooner or later. I mean, it, he's he, I mean he's just a great talent, like you said. They're wasting mm -hmm. his talent at WWE. They're not giving them chances to even win a belt and all that. But I think he's gonna I think he's gonna win the U.S. belt and he's gonna uh, uh, be a good U.S. champ. Yeah, I can. And I'm not a big Nakamura fan either, but he he, he deserve he's he's owed a belt. He's going to get the belt. Mhm. Mm yeah. Yeah, definitely. I can definitely I can definitely see that. I mean, I would love to see I definitely would like I said, I'd like to see Jeff hold on to that belt or you know, have him I I want to see Jeff hold on to the US title. I want to see him Go on and feud with someone like Sienna Amis. That's competition right there because yeah, they could put like on a hell of a match. A great main event, yeah. But yeah, I can see. Yeah, I I agree with what you guys say too with the Nakamura thing because yeah, they've been pushing Nakamura around. He, if you realize this this year, both Royal Rumble winners did not win their title match at WrestleMania yep. this year. They did not. And look how long they dragged out the thing with freaking Nakamura and AJ. And thank God that basically ended because it just it ran its course there. It definitely ran its course. But I, I feel that Hardy is going to retain the belt, and I'd like to see him give us some competition like Sienna Amis, you know? <coughs> Good points. Good conversation on this one, man. Let's add some points there. <laughs> Tommy, it looks like Robin is basically he's up to you by five points in this one because I'm going to have to give he pulled out some really good points. You pulled out really good points too. Tommy, I'm going to I'm going to give you 10 points. Okay? I'm going to give you 10 points for that one right there, which you are now at 75. Robin is, I'm going to have to give him 15, which he will be. Actually, your guys are tied up right now. Yeah. Oh, there we oh, go. Okay. Neck to neck. No. Neck to neck, man. Neck to or neck. Or like how Tito says it, Riva. Riva. <laughs> Riva. <laughs> oh, or man. what Jesse Ventura used to say to Tito back in the day. McMahon, I bet he wishes he's back in Tijuana selling those tacos. <laughs> <laughs> Let me move this over here. It's cutting off right there. There we go. There you guys are. Getcha. That's what happens when you mess with notepad right there. All right. So we got Mr. So Smooth Tommy James at 75 and Mr. Russell Popcast Robin Nelson at 75. It's a tied game, brother. 
We don't know what's going to be happening because here, put us soon. You see, the, the gloves are going to come off. The drop kicks coming off the ropes in the top turnbuckles. It's going every man for themselves over the top rope because, brother, you see, one thing is that, Ric Flair, you better watch out because I'm coming to the Omni and we're going to drop kick you with my polka dot boots and we're going to find out who, which one is the extreme wrestling brother of another mother. Holla. Oh, if you're going to go down the dusty road to be like, <laughs> let me tell you something, man. Let me tell you something about high times. You work at a factory for 30 years and get a good gold watch. That's high times. I wanted to dine with kings and queens and ate my baked beans. That's high times. And Ric Flair, you're ruining it for all the blue-collar American people out there. Talking about high times. <laughs> Great, man. Excellent. Excellent. <laughs> Excellent. I, I'll tell you who's been having some hard times been here lately in this next match. <laughs> Kevin Owens. <laughs> he has a big, sweaty man, like JKO, Johnny Knockout would say, big, sweaty man, basically wanting to go after him, which we're talking about Braun Strowman. Braun Strowman versus Kevin Owens. Oh, I love Braun. And a steel cage match. <laughs> What's that, Tommy? <laughs> Man, it's just, he's just I want to give him a hug. Like you know, he just that's such a nice guy right there. And then they, they also he was a sweetheart too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Braun Strowman was a big teddy bear man. <laughs> <laughs> he is. He is. Tommy, start this off, man. Steel cage match. You got Mister, you know, monster, Mister Monster in the bank against Mister Kevin Owens, Mister KO. What? Mr. What Mr. the heck? Death. He's he's just dying now. They're just using KO to die. It's. I feel so bad for the guy. I mean, the man could take a bump. I'll give you that much. This guy is just getting destroyed. But I actually think he's gonna win. I think he's gonna win because Braun's gonna. I don't know how they can do this. Does Braun throw him over the cage? Does Braun throw him through? Throw him through the cage? Does he throw him through the door? Or something's gonna happen. I, I, Braun doesn't really need the victory right now, you know, because he has the the, the briefcase. He's going to cash it in at um, SummerSlam, and everyone's going to lose their shit because the book is going to love it. And he's already murdering him, so it would make more sense if he just murders the crap out of him and just tosses him through a cage. I'd like to see him toss him over the cage. but um, And then, you know, Kevin Owens gets his win, but he dies at the end. You know, he just gets destroyed. It makes the most sense because Kevin Owens is just... He's dying. He's getting dead soon. Sammy's day needs to help him. He can't. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. It's a waste of a match again, though. That's the only problem. It's, it's just another throw-together match. We have nothing really to do, so we'll make these guys fight, and everybody will laugh and have a great time. Because Owen is going to just talk a bunch of shit, which is going to be hilarious. Because that's the good part about him. He's a great mouth. He's a great, again, another waste of talent. But, you know, that's just whatever. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I totally, I totally agree with everything right there, Robin. Your thoughts? Um, Kevin Owens is going to get the beating, him, beating of his life, but he's going to end up winning. And I think he's going to get. Um, I think Braun's going to, uh, you know, uh, rub his face all over the uh, cage. He's going to find some way to shove uh, Braun's heads, um, not Braun, uh, Kevin Owens' fat little head through the cage. Well, I agree with you. It's either going to be thrown out from the top or through the door. Or maybe, you know, right through the inside under the ring. Who knows? But Kevin Owens is going to win, but he's going to be severely damaged after the match. Mm hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. He's. The only way it could end that would, it would make sense for both competitors to at least be strong. You have KO get his victory, but you have Braun murder him and kind of help him win in the way by throwing him out of the cage. Because Braun doesn't care if he wins or not, he just wants to beat the crap out of him. No, yeah, he wants to lift up ambulances and trucks and uh, put uh, Kevin Owens again in another porter pot and throw him off the stage. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, it's just that freaking. I I feel Braun. He'll probably end up doing something like like Tommy said. He'll end up doing something to Kevin Owens. Kevin Owens is going to fly through the through the cage and he's going to win. He's going to win, and Braun's going to be, like, you know, pissed about it. And we may see Braun chase 
Owens out of the building, and you will see eventually, you will get to see Owens get in his car and haul ass out of there. If not, then you're going to see an angle where he's trying to pull out and take off, and he's not going anywhere. Braun has the back of it, you know, and he's like, I'm not finished with you, you know. <laughs> and then he's going to crush him, you know. <laughs> but, yeah, I, I, I feel Braun's going to do something where unintentionally, and it's going to make Owens win. And Owens is going to get the hell out of that arena quick as he got down to the ring inside and out of the cage. I totally agree. And it's not going to hurt Braun because Braun is Mr. Monster in the Bank. It's not. Yeah, exactly. That's the, that's the whole point. Like, there's nothing is going to hurt Braun right now. The only way it would hurt Braun is if he gets pinned clean. That's the only way it would hurt him. But there's the best, best way to do it, and, I, and that's what, I, what I'm glad is we all really agree on the same point. Just have Owens get the victory so he doesn't look like a shrub. But have Braun be the reason that he gets the victory because he just kicks the shit out of him. I love um, every what you said about have him just like haul and ass. Where is where, where is the pay per view taking place? Like it's, what city? Pitts, uh, I believe uh, it's taking place up in your neck in the woods around there, Robin. Uh, I believe up in Pittsburgh. That's where it's taking place at. Okay. I'm gonna have to give points. To both of you gentlemen. Well, of course, both of you gentlemen, but <laughs> I'm going to have to give both of you guys 10 points there. That was very good right there. Very good. So we're at 85 and Mr. 85 right there. The Women's SmackDown Championship match with Carmella versus Asuka. Then you got James Ellsworth in a shark cage hanging above the ring. Really? How many times have we seen a freaking shark cage above a ring with a freaking person in it? Come on now. You know? I mean, it's... I don't, I'm going to let Robin start this off, man. <laughs> oh, gosh. Um, Carmela's going to will regain her title because Ellsworth is going to be like a little weasel. He's going to find this way to get out of the cage and he's going to interfere in the match to get Asuka, you know, focusing on him where Carmella is going to cheat and um, win, win being, by being dirty. That's what I think it's going to um, end up happening. And then Asuka is going to beat up little Ellsworth because Ellsworth is one of the girls. That's the only wrestler she can wrestle other women. You can't wrestle like real men out there and stuff. So um, I don't like Carmella as the champ. She's gonna, she'll still be the champ and all that. She can't, she can't do a good promo. She can't wrestle. Um, the only way she keeps her title is, is she's gonna win by cheating, and Ellsworth's gonna help her win that. And then Ellsworth's gonna get an ass beaten by a suit, uh, you know, Osaka. So, mm -hmm. yeah, it's gonna be a boring match actually, but we know he's gonna get the belt. So, yeah, I agree. I agree. Tommy? Yeah, I mean, I agree. Uh, Carmella is going to keep the belt. It only makes sense to have her still hold on to the title. There's no reason for her to take it off right now, even though it's against Asuka. Ellsworth is back. What do you do? And uh, he'll get involved, just like everybody in the Shark Tank gets involved. And Asuka's going to kick his ass, yeah. But um, I'm hoping we see that uh, the Moonwalk DDT, because she has mentioned that she's going to do it. Yeah, so, you know we'll get to see that, and you know it'll be a nice little like applaud to see it. Um, she's gotten better in the ring for sure than she originally was. I think her promos aren't too bad. The, you know she's a pretty good heel because she's that Staten Island bitch, and yeah. it just works because you know especially somebody from Brooklyn too. Like I'm used to like with the Staten Island girls and how they usually act, and she, she she's perfect because she actually is from Staten Island. So it makes sense, and um, I don't really. The problem with that belt is with Carmella holding it. It's it was interesting when she first got it, but now it's just like I could care less who really holds it. Like yep. I almost forgot who's a women's champ in that sense. Like you know, because they're oh, I did too. That's <laughs> sad though. No, it's, it's not how yeah. it should be. That's why they probably should have gave it to Becky Lynch or you know Amber Moon or somebody that you know it could be more interesting. 
Well, Ember Moon's on Raw, but yeah. still, like, the the point is, there's there's better wrestlers out there that deserve that belt. And Carmella, being a, a decent heel that she is, it's right. nice to see it. But she's just holding it for Charlotte. That's just where it's coming down to. Charlotte's gonna come down. Probably <laughs> mm-hmm. oh, at SummerSlam. Yeah, uh, Becky Lynch should be uh, the real the real title holder. She's I think she's the best wrestler out of that whole women's roster, man. Yeah, mm-hmm. I mean she's getting better at her promos. She's yeah. solid in the ring. She, they, she, they just make her they just make her stupid and make her do stupid matches. She should be the uh, women's champ right now, man. Becky Lynch is the Raw's women's champ, man. Uh, um, not Raw, I mean SmackDown's women's champ. Right. She should right. be having that belt, you know. I think she's the best one in that whole roster. Yeah, yeah, and Naomi close too. Naomi's she's really doing to do. Like she's yeah, great in the for sure. Like I mean, the whole blow thing works. Like you know, she's really talented in the ring. I mean, her promos are just normal, they're nothing special, but like it does the job. So like to me, if she had the belt, at least it'd be a little more interesting because she can actually. She's a good champ. You know, the way she presents herself would make a lot of sense. Carmella is just a good whiny champ, which is fine for a heel, but. It gets overplayed after a while. Now with Ellsworth back, it kind of throws it where, like, I honestly, if Ellsworth wasn't back, she'd be a better heel than she really is. Mm-hmm. You know, I think so yeah. too. And I rather, her... yeah, yeah, I rather see Becky Lynch wrestle Osaka for the belt than yeah. Carmella and Osaka. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. hell yeah, that's actually a good wrestling match, which is what we want to see is a good wrestling match. And with Oscar, especially, she's, I mean, you know, she's Oscar. She's she's phenomenal. And she has to now hold this whole match together like she did before. Yeah. Just so that, uh, you know, she's just going to get screwed, catch a DDT, and then it's going to be the end of the match. One, two, three. And then yeah. you're like, the only thing Carmella is good for is her good looks and giving blowjobs to the guys in the locker room. <laughs> she's got great legs, for sure. She has amazing legs, and I'm sure she gives great blowjobs because girls from Staten Island are known for doing that. <laughs> oh wow! I need to go to Staten Island and get one. <laughs> <laughs> Damn! Got a lot and the Italian girls and the yeah. Oh and man! I have the Disco Inferno be my pimp. Player, <laughs> 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 it's on every day, all day. Yeah, Carmella and Oscar. I know I was getting all frustrated because I was just trying to get the words out. I'm like, what the fuck am I going to say about this? This is what I'm going to say. James Ellsworth, okay, has more, gets more TV time, okay? This guy gets more freaking TV time than freaking Sienna Amis, Andreas, okay? That's talent right there. And you're going to give this turtleneck guy more TV time than talent, in-ring talent like this? That's pretty fucked up right there, okay? That is pretty messed up. he's got the gas tattoos. Yeah, yeah. It, it it's like okay, you're gonna give this guy more TV time than someone that has could deserve more TV time in the ring than this guy, and then Carmella. Yeah, they they basically they're gonna keep the belt on her. They're gonna drag it out. Oscar's gonna be chasing and this chasing this. They made Oscar a basically dumber than a box of Crayola crayons right now. Okay. That match that happened on SmackDown, if you think about it, okay, when the bell would ring, Oscar would have grabbed the hold of Ellsworth, made him tap out, and when Carmella would be like, oh, what the hell, and he got up in the ring, boom, she would have got freaking choked out too. Oscar would have walked off, okay? But no, had to run out the ring, run around the arena and stuff, and come back in the ring, and boom, really? Did you not think Carmella's going to do that? Come on now. I, I look at them doing something crazy, and Carmella's going to retain the title. And Asuka, I mean, just... If Asuka's going to win the SmackDown Women's Championship, it's going to be at SummerSlam. I'm going to give you guys both 10 points on that one, man. Good points. I love what you guys got to say. Really good right there. 10 points for you, Robin, and 10 points for you, Tommy. 95, 95. We got the Raw Women's Championship match. Oh, my girl. My five feet of fury. Yes. She's the perfect size. Oh, I love my Alexa Bliss. Great heel. Great on the mic. Great entertainer. Yep. My girl is still going to retain that title, man. 
That's my girl, Alexa Bliss. That's a true women's champ, man. That match, oh, all I have to say is Five Feet of Fury is going to win. Yeah. Alexa Bliss first Nia Jax. So you're going, you're Nia going. Nia Jax doesn't have any talent, and she, she doesn't have any charisma, and she can't do a promo worth her life, man. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, I agree. I definitely agree. I definitely agree. Tommy? Yeah, I, see, I like Nia Jackson. Like, for a big girl, she could move, but her promo skills, are, are they're not good, you know? And um, I was a little shocked that they took the belt from her as quick as they did. Um, I guess it's just for the whole story thing, the whole bullying thing. Like, they confused the crap out of me. She went from being against bullying to bullying to being against bullying, and I'm glad that Alexa got the belt back because I love me some Alexa Bliss um, I, I tell my girl all the time that she should cosplay. She should even do one I at like right now. That she would be like hot. Her. That would be hot. The only guy cosplay is Lex Bliss. She told me to kiss my ass. She'd rather do Lita, which, you know, I'm fine. Hey, Lita, hey, Lita's sexy too, man. I would love to wrestle her too. She can you get, get any time. Yeah, that's great. Like, I, I love like, Lita. Like Chris Stratus, she can stratify me too. Any yeah. day of the week. I'll think of Stratus back. <laughs> really? Trish Stratus? She, 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 you know, I mean, there's a lot of good ones out there, too. Yes. I mean, it's not the law is like crap when it comes to their women. Yeah, I think so. She's just, she's the person that needs to hold that title for a while. I don't think Nia, yeah, Nia's not going to get the belt back because she's not going to get it. Alexa is going to hold on to this belt. SummerSlam, you're going to see Alexa Bliss first Ronda Rousey because yeah, Ronda's, think- Ronda's full baby face. She needs yeah, a I can heel. Yeah, that though too. But if they do that match, Alexa's gonna still win because right now Ronda's getting used to, to the program of mm-hmm. WWE. So if that happens, Alexa Bliss is still gonna keep that belt. I mean, Ronda will probably you know beat the living tar out of her, but Alexis will still keep that belt. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think and I believe that that Alexa is the best female heel right now. For someone to work with Ronda Rousey, Nia's not going to win the win the Raw Women's Championship back. No, that's not going to happen. Alexa is going to retain and move on, and Ronda Rousey that's going to go into it. I'm going to give Tommy. I'm going to give you ten points, so that's going to put you at 105. Ooh, and over 100. Robin, you pulled up some really good points too. I'm going to put you at 105 too, right there. The match that no one wants to see, no one really cares for. I don't really care for this because after what I've heard and what's being reported about this, I'm like, really? Are you fucking kidding me? I have a better chance. I have a better... 33 and third chance... ...of clicking off the network. (laughs) There you go. Ah. Is, is it, it one of those matches where I don't want to watch and I'd rather go sit on the toilet and take a shit? Yeah, yeah. this is a bathroom break match right here. You okay? But all right, for for to, for for Tommy, example for Tommy, when this match comes on, Tommy can go out, go down his stairs out of his apartment, jump in his car, drive out there to the gas station, fill up a tank of gas, look at his watch, like okay. And then when he gets done, he can walk in there, he'll browse around. Okay, look around, you know, sit there, decide what what to pick out of the the beverage thing. Okay, I think I'll get this and get that. Oh, Jen wanted to, okay, all right, get this, take your time, walk around. Uh, I don't, uh, okay, I got this, I got this, okay. He's had everything, he goes over, he pays, you know, oh, oh, damn, I left let my change out in the car. I'll be right back. Tells the, tells the cashier. And he goes out there, takes his time, digs out his change, comes back. <laughs> Pays the man, you know. Okay. And then he takes everything and he slowly stretches back to his car, gets back in his car, drives back 
to his apartment, takes his time coming up the stairs, kicks the door, you know, Jen, got the handful of stuff here, comes in, sits down, looks at Jen and says, what I miss? Oh, nothing. Okay. What's next match? That's it. <laughs> That's the scenario right there. That's the scenario. I'm talking about Roman Reigns versus Bobby Lashley. <laughs> hey, um, on this conversation, I, I no comment. I have nothing to say. You can give me zero points. No comment, man. Let's get to the next topic. <laughs> but you get the point, huh? <laughs> so you got no comment on that, Robin. Nothing. Okay. Tommy? <laughs> You want to add anything uh, to this since you're coming back from the store? Roman Reigns, it's it's only because I want him to fucking lose. I'm sorry, I'm wearing Jen's Roman Reigns shirt. It was originally mine because it's huge. But yeah, no, screw Roman Reigns. Bobby Lashley is meh. It's a, yeah. I think that's what I'm going to do actually when this match goes on. Jen will enjoy it because she likes to look at Roman. So she'll enjoy him with his hair and his muscles, even though he's blocking everything. And he'll blah, and he'll mouth his mouth will wide open. And yeah, I'll come back, and the match will still be going on. This is probably going to go off. But this is supposed to be the main event too. That's yeah. the fucked up part. They actually said they want this to be the main event. Who the fuck wants to watch that as a main event? Oh, you know what I'm gonna do when that happens? I'm gonna go on Netflix and um, watch Glow all over. I'll watch like two episodes. <laughs> You could probably get through three episodes or a whole. S- You'll probably get through a whole season of Glow by the time this match is over with, man. Yeah, because I'll be like, is it over now? I just got done watching Glow. Just like, <laughs> just now like, it'll, listen, so, I'll go and watch My Name Is Earl. I'm almost done with it, so that's a good show. I love yeah. Earl. Jason yeah, Lee Jason Lee's famous, great, man. You gotta love Mall Jason rats. Lee. Mall rats. Like I, like I'm like one episode away until I finish the entire season, but yeah, that's I'll a great show. An episode for this match, and just be like, mm-hmm. all right, let's go see what Earl's doing at the end. Yeah, yeah, that's basically. Let's see what he's gonna scratch off his list of all the people he had to make up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, put Roman Reigns on his list and then just scratch him off because he's fucking. <laughs> yeah, and scratch off, and scratch off Lashley too. <laughs> I know, I know. Let McShaft's gonna be loving this match because McShaft's gonna McShaft's gonna keep count of how many suplex botches he does, Bobby Lashley. <laughs> and you know something, and Reigns shouldn't be um, doing those Superman punches. That gives Superman and DC Comics a bad name. It does. Yeah. Um, sales go down to Superman comics every time he does it. <laughs> you, know, you know, yeah. <laughs> you know, I'd rather see besides like that. I like, I'd rather see Everett take on Corey Graves or David C. Russell in a match. <laughs> that's, that's a worst pay per view right there. I got some bad news to tell you. I'm afraid I've got some bad news. Every time Roman Reigns does a Superman punch, a Kryptonian gets affected by green kryptonite. (laughs) Hey fans, here at Podcast City Network, we have a lot of great shows. We have a wide variety of shows that cover the landscape in podcasts, a podcast for anyone and everyone. Such as The Chris Garnett Show, The Everett Lee Show, ELS Uncut, Super Radio Brothers, Imaginarium with Scott and Todd, Forking Around with Cody, The Grimlock Show, and Films of Classic. And you can catch these and a whole bunch more only on PodcastCity.net or on all of our great social media outlets. Head over to Facebook.com slash PodcastCityNetwork. Hit that thumbs up. You can send a tweet to Podcast City Network on Twitter at PodcastCityNet. So make sure that you join us for all this only on Podcast City Network. You're listening to The Everett Lee Show. All right, let's just pick a winner, okay? Uh, I'm going to uh, say I, Mr. Bobby okay. Lashley. I, I got my winner. Me. <laughs> <laughs> I 
Unexpected, unexpected. Tommy, you better top that, boy. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to Robin. There's no reason not to. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm no going winner. Robin too. No winner. You know what? Um, just for the hell of it, since we talked about this, okay? I this match. All right, don't take this. Don't take this wrong way. Since this match means nothing, I. And we really don't got nothing to say on it. I'm going to give you guys basically five points each because that's basically... Uh, I would give this match a negative five, but I'm going to give you guys at least... <laughs> you know something? I, I turned that match into a piece of toilet paper, wipe it off the shit off my ass, and flush it down the toilet. Me, yeah. <laughs> me in the toilet struggling to shit out a big, long-ass turd is more of a fight than what this match will be. <laughs> Intercontinental Championship match. You got Dolph Ziggler versus Seth Rollins. Mr. Monday Night oh, Rollins. Oh, my gosh. Yes. I, I, that, that match is going to be fun, man. Dolph mm -hmm. Ziggler and his main boy reminds me of Shawn Michaels and Diesel mm -hmm. all over again, man. Yeah. And I'm going to tell you something. Dolph Ziggler is going to retain that title. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 100%. Yeah, yeah. I McIntyre's a beast. He reminds me mm -hmm. of a young Diesel. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, I uh, I have to agree agree with you, man. That yeah, freaking this right here, Sean. It's like Shawn Michaels and Diesel all over again. Nineteen what was it? Ninety five, ninety six. Was it around there? Ninety five. Ninety five. Yes, nineteen. But I think it was ninety five. I th I think it was. It's 95 all over again. It's 95 all over again because Dolph Ziggler is Shawn Michaels and McIntyre is Diesel. But you can't have McIntyre turn on Ziggler because McIntyre is a natural heel. I was talking with Chris Carnage about this today. McIntyre is a natural heel. He is good at it. You can't have him as a face. When he was in NXT and he was a face, I was like, Ugh. I mean, it was awesome, but in a way, I'm like, mm, not really. He Because he fits that role so much better. And him going toe-to-toe, -to -toe, you know Ziggler is going to give it all. You know Rollins is going to give it all for the fact that... I mean, that's one reason why... Yeah, he can't underestimate Rollins either. He's good. Yeah, that's one reason why I watch Monday Night Raw is because Seth Rollins. I want to see who he's going up against and what he does. Okay. Now, are they going to give the belt back to Rollins because he made it such prestige? That's that's my thing. I mean, they're going to put on a hell of a match. Um, one thing I do want to say, there's two people... Two wrestlers who is off the injured list you guys have probably forgot about. I want to mention one uh, first guy I want to mention is he's at the performance center getting some ring rest off, and he used to run up and down the roads with Roman Reigns and Seth Rollins. So you may see him come back during this fatasco. And basically do a heel turn on Rollins. I'm talking about Mr. Dean Luna. Ambrose. Dean Ambrose, mm -hmm. man. He, he's been well, gone. Before that, before he was Ambrose, he was called Moxley when he was wrestling in the Indies. Mm -hmm. Mr. John Moxley, Dean Ambrose. He may come back. Or also, too, remember, they didn't really finish much on this storyline with Jason Jordan coming back, too. He was who backstage. Who? Jason who? Jason yeah. who? Yeah, Kurt Angle's who son. Who cares about Jason Jordan? Kurt I'd rather watch son. some junior hires wrestle than see Jason Jordan in the ring. <laughs> yeah, Dude. Kurt Angle's son was backstage. He's been at Raw. He was back by backstage behind Raw there the last couple weeks. You may see one of those two guys come out. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing basically, hopefully that Rollins retain, gets the title back and why he's standing there, or Ambrose comes back during the match, 
towards the end, and you figure, well, he's going to even up the odds and help Rollins, and he costs Rollins the title he, where he don't retain it or, or he wins it. And here you can see Rollins versus Ambrose at SummerSlam right there. There you go right there. There's your, there's your match for the next pay-per-view. You agree, disagree, guys? I mean, I knew it was going to be back in September. That was like one of the rumors I was hearing that Ambrose was supposed to be back in September. It could be a throw, you know, like it might be just to say that, just to make you go, oh, here he comes. But it's like we kind of anticipate when he does come back anyway, he's going to turn heel. I think if you want to make this match, it's, I mean, it's already going to be good regardless, and it probably should be the main event. But um, I think it needs to be a clean match. You know, obviously McIntyre is going to get involved just because Drew McIntyre. But you know the ref's going to be like, hey, get out of here. He's going to send him to the back. Yeah. And I want to see Ziggler beat him in a close, uh, I'm going to say a, a four to three. And he's going to beat him four to three in a clean way, though. Just to beat him oh, I would love to see that, that too. With like, like five seconds left and he just gets the super kick on him and just falls right on him. There's one, two, three, right at the, as it was about to end. And it shows Ziggler is legitimate as an intercontinental champ, which he is. And it still keeps Rollins strong, yep. you know, because one of those one of those like losses could be because of McIntyre. So he can actually fight back, be like, "Well, if your boy wasn't there, then so on and so forth." And then you can go to SummerSlam. Let's say if if Ambrose does come back, you can go to SummerSlam with Ambrose and Rollins versus Dolph and McIntyre. Then you can turn on him. And the New York crowd will like it. So, you know, and they like McIntyre. They like Ziggler. And I, like I said, like you guys are saying, it's it's just Michaels and Diesel all over again. And it's perfection. Yeah. we are perfection. Robin? I totally agree with him, man. That's where I was going to see it going. And during this pay-per-view, you don't know. Maybe uh, Ambrose will run in and, you know, help Rollins, man. Maybe, you know, because McIntyre and Ziggler can start beating the living tar after the match. The, you know Ambrose come in and then like he said they do it the next pay per view where they you know wrestle do a good match and then when he like turns on him I can definitely see that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's gonna set up. It's gonna set up. Uh, Ziggler's gonna retain, and Rollins is gonna lose thanks to interference, outside interference. You can see that. The last but not least, to me, this is the title. If you want pristine prestige with, okay, this is the title that basically is the title that to me in modern day right now for who holding the record for the title longest would be CM Punk in the modern day. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. Universal Championship, that's its own thing. This is something different. Talk about the WWE Championship match. We have AJ Styles, the phenomenal one. AJ Styles versus. The Bulgarian brute who has his own day. We're talking about Rusev Day. Rusev. <laughs> Rusev Day. Rusev Day. This right here is Rusev's first like main like championship shot. Okay? Yes, it is. His first WWE championship shot. This right here is the match that I am looking forward to most on this right here because I want to know if AJ is phenomenal, okay? AJ can work with the best, and he can work and do so much with whoever you put him up against. He can make them look good, or, and depending on who he's working with, can make him look good too, make him look phenomenal, no pun. But the one thing is that... I want to know if they're going to basically drag this out to SummerSlam and are we going to see Rusev win his first big championship because this guy's over, okay? He's long overdue for the hold a big title than what he did with the U.S. title. Rusev is going to lose and he's going to find himself doing nothing afterwards. Uh, because supposedly it's going to be Samoa Joe versus DJ at SummerSlam. I think that's the what they're really trying to build yeah. to. So, and that's a match I want to see. That's a match that we've seen it that before. That match but would be epic. Yeah. yeah. Epic. Match, you know, and AJ's going to keep this belt for a while because 
who can really, if it wasn't Nakamura, who's going to take it from? Could it be Samoa Joe? It's possible, but do I think it's going to actually happen? Probably not. So Rusev, I think, is just right now like a pillar. He's just there just to say, yeah, here you go, fans. You want him? Rusev Day, there you go. He's going to lose, and then SummerSlam, you'll get Joe versus AJ, which is going to be a phenomenal match, pun intended. Um, and AJ's probably going to win again, but I don't know who can take him out right now. It's just... There's nobody, really. There's nobody. Yeah. Yeah, I I agree. I I agree. But yeah, AJ, I'd like to see Rusev win the win the win the title. I would though, but I feel AJ's gonna retain and I'd love to see this go on at SummerSlam and a big pay per view because SummerSlam's one of the big fours with the WWE with their pay per views. I'd like to see Rusev win his first big title match and I like to see him run with it because this guy's so over, okay? I mean, how could you not? You know? But Oh, you know think yeah. you, you have to get do Rusev do what, what million dollar man man did. I uh, have a Rusev day belt he can defend. Hmm? Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. yeah. That would be that would that would be great. That definitely would be great. But <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I, I'm looking at AJ to win this one, and I think this is going to be a good match because the way I I want to predict this match is that AJ is going to try to throw in some high flying like he does, but Rusev is going to keep him grounded because Rusev knows he keeps AJ grounded and he wears him down. He has a better chance of setting him up for the acolyte and making AJ tap. You know, but I I'm gonna call this okay. I could see the finish being a phenomenal fo- forearm to the to Rusev and a one two three. Okay, I'm calling that. All right, next week Tommy, <laughs> when we do the when we do the uh, results, you can call me out on it. I'm give I'm fair well, game. I'm fair game. I am fair you're game. You're calling phenomenal forearm. I'm calling style splash. Okay. All right. Here's the moment of truth here. We are <laughs> at the end of the prediction show with the points. You both are tied up. Okay. You both are tied up. Tommy, you are going to end this right here with a whopping 130 points. Ooh, okay. Robin, you were pretty entertaining. You were really funny <laughs> with a lot of things. I, I'm going to have to say Tommy was direct and serious with a lot of stuff he said. And he, he did say some funny stuff. Robin was more comical. Um, Robin made me laugh my ass off more. I'm sorry, Tommy. So I'm going to have to give Robin... 140 points right there. <laughs> Next month, we have SummerSlam Prediction Show, which Mr. Ooh, so Smooth Tommy. One. Yeah, Tommy's Tommy's going to definitely be on that one there. I may get on the Prediction Show for SummerSlam, the, throw another element in there. I will try to I will try to see if we can get Chris Carnage in too. I mean, Ooh, having all... I love some Chris Carnage. Tommy's a definite. Robin, if you can do it and we get Chris Carnage on, we have all three of you guys. Oh, God. It's going to. We're going to have to do it. Hey, we're going to make Carnage a. Chris f- Carnage is the shit, man. Yeah. You got to love some Chris Carnage, man. Yeah, you do. And he's back. He's going to be back, actually, next week on. He's going to be back up and running online next week. And one of the things he wants to do is, Tommy, I know we set a date and a time for the prediction show. I mean, the results, which definitely we are going to do next week. Chris wants in on that. Cool. Sweet. Yeah. Now, before we do close, I do want to ask you guys what, what you got going on. Um, I will mention this, uh, Tommy and Robin, hell of a podcast you guys had last week. I love the guest and the subject matter. I listen to Tommy's podcast. I listen to it. I love it. Yeah, yeah. I I do want to give give you props 
Tommy on a really good episode. I loved it because I'm a classic rock fan. I loved how you guys talked about classic rock. I thought it was great. Pulled up really good points with everyone on second rounds and uncanny Mike. And I loved it. I enjoyed the episode, man. I did. Hats off. Hats off. Dude, I've been doing that for such a long time because I'm a big classic rock guy. So I had the opportunity. It was my topic. So I, I was like, you know what? Fuck it. Let's talk classic rock. And it was going great until they shit on Aerosmith, and you know I was a little pissed off about that. I'm not gonna lie. Oh, they better not yeah. be shitting on Steven Tyler. I know. I'll go over there and hit him with a steel chair. They, <laughs> they weren't even. It wasn't even on Tyler. They went after Perry. <laughs> they yeah. were like, what? Perry. Yeah. No, yeah. no, no, no. no. <laughs> if I was there, someone would have been getting hit in the head with a steel chair. <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting because you, if you watch it, you can see my face. Like when they, like I think I can't even. like, oh yeah, they're just the same. But I'm like. What? I would have been like, like, no. been like what? <laughs> <laughs> what? What? No, yeah. no, no. I got listen. I love. I love Aerosmith since I was a kid. I got uh, the book based on them. Like I read, and it's it's so great. Uh, the the ride in Disney, just the fact that you're on a roller coaster that plays Aerosmith music. I mean, I've seen them live, you know, and they fight all the time, and that's why they, you know, you barely see them together anymore. But they put good music out. They put it. Since the seventies, and it's you know there's great bands out there. We talked a lot of really we named a lot of great bands. Skinner was another one that got named. The Kinks got named. The Clash, but to me it was you know Aerosmith was always number one. Well, mm-hmm. thank God you guys didn't mention Winger. <laughs> <laughs> oh God. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god that's crazy that's crazy speaking of second rounds what uh what else uh could we expect i know you're doing the the who you got challenge you're getting ready for tampa the megacon tampa you're getting ready for that and i know in october god, i love comic conventions Megacon's on my bucket list, and I go everywhere to conventions, but I need to go to Megacon. Yeah, you need to go to Megacon. Uh, Tommy, second rounds, they tore it up in Megacon Orlando. Uh, was it last month or two months ago? It was last month. It yeah, was, June, uh, May. Yeah, May, two months ago. They tore it up, man. And they 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 put some really good Instagram videos and pictures they posted on their Facebook and social media right there. You can see on the side there. You could follow second more second rounds on Twitter at second rounds and on Facebook second rounds, which was freaking fantastic. All the content you put out, and yep. you, you're getting ready for you're getting ready for MegaCon Tampa, man. I mean, you did your first. You know, this one's going to be. You know, Eddie, this is his conference, right? Yeah, he had his conference. He uh, he walk, walked out with Ron Swanson from mm-hmm. Parks and Rec. Uh, uh, he he beat uh, John Wick, which I totally disagree with. He beat Sephiroth from Final Fantasy, which I don't know. And he the the final matchup was he beat the Dark One from uh, Once Upon a Time that was mixed with Rambo. I don't know. I don't know how it happened. Um, and uh, so he's going to go with Ron Swanson. He better pray to God that people look at it like a funny just vote because that belt, in my opinion, he is not getting that belt. And uh, after, what is it? So tomorrow we have an episode. Next week is Ashley's conference. Um, so that'll be interesting to see. And then next month, uh, Mr. A-Town Ryan, actually, from the New York City edition is coming down to visit. He's going to be on my conference so he's going to screw me over probably. I'm going to walk out with Zach Morris. I can see this happening right now. <laughs> uh, that, that's not going to be good. <laughs> and then Uncanny Mike goes in September right before we go. So we're just going to hope that he doesn't become a three-time champ because uh, I don't need him talking that much shit no more. Yeah. I need my belt. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Definitely. And more second rounds podcast Florida and New York edition on where can they uh, listen to the audio podcast at if they're not uh, well, uh, tuned in already Podbean, Podbean Spotify obviously podcastcity.net uh, and uh, you know uh, iTunes I mean you can go anywhere to be honest with you I actually checked today I think in 2ND round and we are right over 
the NFL draft. So I was like, look at that. We passed the NFL draft in with Google search. So I was pretty happy about that. And I know Google now has their own Google podcast, which I know all of us are actually on it. Um, so that's pretty awesome. And, uh, yeah, no, we're, we're, you know, we're trying to get out there as much as we can. You know, it's, we're doing good. I know New York's doing great. Obviously, uh, you know, shout out to the, uh, the Phoenix Gate. She's, she's back doing her thing. So I'm, I'm glad to see her back moving along, chugging along to get those episodes out. Um, so it's, it's nice to see. And, uh, like I said, it's going to be fun. We got a fun ride. We got a lot of cool things coming. A lot of interesting things are going to be happening and a lot of changes are coming too. Excellent. Excellent, man. Excellent. I'm looking forward to it, and I know everybody else that follows the Podcast A Network is looking forward to it, too, and it's going to be awesome. It is. Robin, you've been tearing it up on Podcast City Network. I mean, you're all over the place, man. You're on, like, iHeart, Stitcher Radio Now, and iTunes, even with your paranormal podcast, which is on iTunes finally now, you know? Yeah, it's it's pretty wild. I'm everywhere. Like I said, I'm on Spreaker, iTunes, iHeartRadio, Stitcher, um, you know, um, YouTube. I'm everywhere. I'm just I'm just blowing I'm blowing up everywhere, man. I'm a busy guy, man. I love my podcasting. And uh, next week, I'll be at Rockstar Pro Wrestling in Dayton when uh, QO, uh, you know, invades Rockstar. And then that Saturday, I'll be in Clarksville, Tennessee, for Tried and True pro wrestling which is pretty good um nwa's tim storm is going to be there which is pretty cool he's going to be wrestling somebody from the nwa and then i'm going to be going to a uh, horror hound in indianapolis uh Kiefer sutherland's going to be there jason patrick from the lost boys fan. and then, <laughs> no way and then i'll be at Starcast and all in at the end of august which is pretty fun. And then I'm going to another convention. I'm going to the Rhode Island Comic Con. But, yeah, it, I, I'm, I'm like you guys. I'm, I'm a busy bee, man, busy bee. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, definitely. That That's awesome. And both you guys, both your podcast is great. I love listening to your podcast. I love catching you when you go live on Facebook. And I love all the content you share with Podcast City Network and just everything with with what you do for the network and i appreciate it and i've been a busy talk about being busy i've been pretty busy myself i mean hell i mean this is episode 91 if you looked on (laughs) yes thank you I, i i can't believe i made it this far 91 episodes already now one thing that if you've noticed on the Everett Lee Show Facebook page, which you can see over there in the corner right there at facebook.com slash the Everett Lee, click that thumbs up. And on Podcast City's Facebook page, facebook.com slash Podcast City Network, hit that thumbs up too. That, there's countdown to episode 100, which I'll be sharing through up until 100 when I get there best of moments through all 99 episodes of the Everett Lee. I know we're at 91. I say 99, but yeah, there's a lot of content, a lot of moments. And if you already caught the one moment from episode 11, where it smells dark, (laughs) then you'll know what I'm talking about. (laughs) I want to see the one where you get, uh, I want to see the one where you get beat up by the wrestler. (laughs) Well, that's coming. That's coming. There's a lot of clips coming. And a lot of content to share and stuff. Uh, look forward next week for another clip that will be shared on the Everett Lee Sh- Show Facebook page and on the Podcasting Network page. And counting up to episode 100, all I can say is I've been working on some stuff here and there on episode 100. And all I can say is I got one hell of an intro for episode 100 that you will be like, wow, how the hell That's did you pull hey, that you off? Do- for episode 100, you should do a giveaway, too. Well, I've got some stuff going around and stuff planned because this the 100 episode, it's going to probably be maybe, if I the way I'm planning it, it may be over two and a half hours. 
just like this podcast here. <laughs> I love it. I love it, man, because it's great content, great conversation, everything and stuff. And that right there is pretty much about it for the Everett Lee Show podcast, man. Again. I want to tell you something. I had fun tonight. This is this is yeah. great. I would love that for all three of us to do something like this again. Yeah. I know. I know. We man. can talk about movies, rock and roll, punk, whatever. Action figures, conventions. Hey. Yeah. I am down for that. Matter of fact, Robin, we should get you on one of our Who You Got challenges because there is a plan that we're going to do a Podcast City Network Who You Got challenge. Yes. There's going to be four different shows coming against each <laughs> other. So no, we cool. can throw you in there. And I think it would be pretty great I, to actually have a good challenge. Yeah, it would be great. Oh, I'll tell you all about it, how it breaks down. Everett knows the deal because he's he's actually sat through one of our challenges. There are rules to it, so I like okay. to explain it to you. And you come, we will be able to set it all up. I think it'll be pretty cool. I mean, it'll be bragging rights, pretty much, for the network. Who oh, can that take? That would be awesome. That would be awesome. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's it's going to be awesome. It is. Robin is a but, big uh, comic book fan. I uh, do a thing too. Um, I'm coming out next year to uh, to Florida, you know, to come see Everett and stuff. And I think David's coming. I think we need to do a live Facebook feed where videoing where Everett gets into a wrestling ring with uh, David C. Russell. I want to see that match. <laughs> yeah, I'm down. <laughs> I am going to mention this. I meant. I've been. I want to see this. And we'll make a belt. We'll give him a belt. <laughs> there is talk. Me and Chris Carnage has been jumping, talking, and discussing stuff, which we will. We've been talking about, which is going to happen probably in January. We are doing a one-year podcast City Network anniversary show at City Limits Tap Room. Ooh, mm -hmm. right. Yep, it's in talks right now, and as time gets closer, more detail and stuff will come but for one thing the shows here in florida i know once a date and everything is set it will be so far all i know is it'll be like on a weekend it will definitely be on a weekend like on a saturday the shows that we have here on the network that are in florida once find out the date and everything I know they will be there i know tommy will definitely be there i know super radio brothers will definitely be there Tommy Robin. better be there next year when, when I come visit down south, buddy. <laughs> oh, dude, we're going to the bar. We're going right to the bar, and we're drinking. That's how it's going to work. Oh, dude, we're going to get so fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be great. It's going to be great. But we're going to set that David C. Russell and Everett match, though. So that's going to happen. Yeah. Yeah, we're gonna, we have to happen now. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yes, we got to have it. <laughs> <laughs> With that said... I am going to hit the outro music right there. <laughs> and then after that, we can have a prediction, we can have a prediction show before a Wrestle. <laughs> oh, yeah. God. <laughs> Damn. Oh, God. You guys are too great, man. I want to thank you guys for coming on. Tommy from Second Rounds, Fourth Edition, and... Robin Nelson from Wrestle Podcast and Robin Nelson presents Paranormal Files 13. Everett Lee signing off. Everyone, have a good night. We'll see you again next week on the Everett Lee Show. Peace.